what would happen if all the mosquitoes in the world just disappeared? Uh, the loss of any species is generally considered a bad thing for our planet as a whole, but in the case of mosquitoes, I've seen actual biologists shrug their shoulders and be unable to come up with a single reason why we wouldn't all be better off without mosquitoes. Fuck those needle-nosed little bastards. But the same isn't true for all insects. If all of the insects disappeared, we would be pretty well screwed. Uh, arthropods, which include insects, spiders, millipedes, uh, basically think of all of the things we call bugs, uh, plus crustaceans, which I personally think of as sea bugs, they make up a tremendous and important segment of our environment. Uh, I'm re reminded of the apocryphal story of the biologist J.B.S. Haldane, who was asked what his study had taught him about the nature of God, to which he replied, an inordinate fondness for beetles. Uh, of all of the species we know about in the world, insects alone count for 80% of them. And biologists believe that there are millions more we have yet to discover, millions more species we don't even know about yet. There are about 10 quintillion insects alive right now as I'm speaking. Yikes. So yeah, if all of those disappeared, a lot of small animals like frogs and birds would go hungry and die. And then a lot of larger mammals would go hungry and die. And a lot of plants would no longer be pollinated. And well, you get the idea. It would be a big disaster. So it's a pretty big deal that a new global review on the state of insects has come out this week, and it's pretty grim. Francisco Sanchez Bio at the University of Sydney analyzed more than 70 long-term studies on the biodiversity of insect species worldwide, and he found that about 40% of all of them are on the decline population-wise, uh, with about a third of those headed straight for extinction. Sanchez Bio points out that uh, some areas of the world are seeing such a steep decline in insect population that within 10 years, there might be no insects in those regions at all. That's terrifying, but it's not necessarily the last word on the issue. Uh, my friend, very talented entomologist Gwen Pearson, who you might know as Bug Girl from my website, Skeptic, uh, she broke it down pretty well over on Twitter. Will all insects go extinct? Heavens no. Will some insect species go extinct or decline a lot? Already happening. Will some insect species increase and become more common slash spread across the globe? Already happening. Gwen then directs people to the Entomological Society of America who point out uh, that fact that I mentioned about how there are millions of species we haven't even identified yet, so we don't even know the true extent of the problem. Those unknown species might be doing the same thing. They might be declining or they might be increasing. We just don't know. But the fact that the percentage of insects we can see are declining, 40% of them, uh, and other biologists are seeing a corresponding decline in the population of birds who subsist on insects, that's a big worry. So what do we do about it? As I talked about before with the bees, uh, there's no one reason why we're seeing such a dramatic decline overall in insect populations. One huge problem is climate change. Uh, yeah, just like with the bees um, and with the forest fires and with pretty much every other pressing environmental problem we have right now. It touches everything, and it's probably the reason why we're all going to die, to be honest. Uh, so we can always say, yes, climate change is going to be an, a factor here. Uh, but that's mostly in places like Puerto Rico, where an increase in cyclones has led to an increase in deforestation, which led to a lack of habitat for insects, which leads to a decrease in insect population. Uh, but in other places like Europe and the US, the problems are more directly human-caused, Pesticides and lawns. Yes, lawns. If you have a lawn, get rid of it. Seriously, just throw it away. Get rid of it. I'm loath to make individuals feel bad about their choices when the much larger problem usually does come from corporations and politicians who are making much, much, much worse decisions that have a much, much, much larger impact on the world. But this is a thing that you can do to help this problem. 
Keeping a lawn is generally just a waste of resources, uh, especially here in California, where we often have to deal with significant issues with access to water. Uh, and worse in this circumstance is that it removes native plants that are part of the habitat for local insects. Those plants evolved along with those insects, so they can support more of those insects than the invasive plants that you might be planting in your garden. And if your yard is just grass, well, you might as well have just paved it over and made a parking lot for all of the help it does for local insects. Grass does basically nothing for them. One study found that grass is actually the U.S.'s single largest irrigated crop in surface area, even more so than corn. Of course, that includes things like golf courses. And yes, I'm sorry, but if you enjoy golf, uh, you need to know that those things are a ridiculous waste of space that also takes away native habitats. That's right, golf has a significant carbon footprint, even before you take into account the private jet that carries Donald Trump from D.C. to Florida and back every single weekend. So yeah, it may not be the end of the world yet, but our insects aren't doing well, and if they keep declining, things are going to get really bad. If you want to help, and if you're one of the lucky few to actually have a lawn, uh, who has room for a lawn, consider burning it down. Well, no, not literally. Uh, that could be dangerous. Uh, get that boring grass out of there and learn about the plants that are native to your area. Your yard will look way cooler and you'll be providing a home to the millions of individuals who are working hard to keep our entire food chain in good working order. <laughs> 